Hello, everybody. It's Cindy Ingram, and I am excited to introduce our brand new summer series, Art Around the World in 30 Days. And for every weekday in the month of July 2023, I will be introducing for you a brand new work of art. And I'm doing this to help me really um, connect in with art. I have spent the last month not really connecting much with art or art making. And I decided this would be a great way to um, connect me with, you know, my purpose. And um, in the past, when I have done Art Around the World in, I did Art Around the World in 30 days, November 2014, almost uh, almost nine years ago, um, I was very specific about making sure every everyone was a different part of the world. I did it again and a few years later. It was July, but now I don't remember the year, 2016 maybe. Um, I did Art Around the World in 21 days. Um, and I did, I did that then. It was art from across time and cultures. And then this time I'm really gonna focus in on contemporary art. And I'm not gonna be too specific about, oh, I have two artworks from America or whatever. I am just gonna be picking art that is compelling to me, artworks that are exciting to me, artworks that are new to me, because um, it's gonna be things that I've never shared before. And it's gonna be things that are really interesting to me right now. And things that I feel like are calling to me to share, calling to me to explore personally. And these, of course, will be easy to include in your classrooms as well if you're an art teacher. But even if you're not an art teacher, this is for everybody because I, I'm picking artworks that I know that have ways to connect to them personally, ways that you can um, learn about yourself through art, find yourself in them, and be able to really connect with yourself through looking at art. Now we also have a giveaway this um, for this series. So every um, from open from now until July 27th, you can go to artclasscurator.com slash AATW, which is art around the world, AATW. And then at the very bottom of that blog post is a giveaway. You can and can join my email list. You can um, visit my Facebook page, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow my Instagram. Uh, I think that's those are it. There might be another one or two. You can share the series. Um, all to be entered into uh, several different prizes. The biggest prize is a membership in the Curated Connections Library. So if you're a teacher, you can get a vast library of artwork lessons so artworks that you can explore with your students lessons from elementary all the way up to college that have ways of connecting to works of art i'm also giving away three one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions if you didn't know i am certified as a coach and i um, really enjoy it also i'm pretty good at it so uh we can work on something that um you're dealing with in your life allow yourself to get some clarity and action plan um whatever it is, uh, we'll spend some time with you talking about it. And then we also have some art supply sets from Royal and Lang, Lang Nickel Brush. Uh, we're $30 each and I'll have a couple of those to give away. So a lot of fun things to um, enter to win. And then um, the last thing I wanna say is I really wanna encourage you to look at this art for yourself. This is not just for art teachers. I will be including some sort of teaching ideas at the, in this lesson or in not lesson, in this video, but mostly this is for anybody. And when you connect with art, when you connect with what is exciting to you, what you're passionate about, what you're interested in, when you know yourself better, when you're more authentically yourself, when you spend time really, um, thinking about what makes you happy, thinking about your values, all of those things, that's going to make you a better teacher. It's going to make you easy, more easily, easy to connect to your students. It will feed into um, your work that you do in the classroom. And you can also take these <laughs> and use them in your classroom too. So um, one of the things that I noticed that uh, there was a period in my business where I got too, I got too much, fo too, too focused on the work that I was doing and not focused on myself enough and my own connection to art. And I would visit an art museum and I would, instead of looking at the art and enjoying it for me, enjoying what it does for me, I would 
think about how to teach it. I would think about how to share it or, you know, how to tell other people how to teach it. And I would, and I lose, I lost that sort of personal connection I had with the art. And that was, it's what has driven me this whole life, right? So I want to remind you in this series, and I'll, I'm sure I'll say it a lot of times, is that really focus on what the art brings for you. And then, and then, think, then you can still think of your students, but think of yourself first. Okay. Um, so let's look at our first work of art. I'm excited. I love this one. Okay. So I haven't visited an art museum in a couple months. I usually go every two weeks. I put it on my calendar at least go every two weeks. I don't always make it. Um, and so I was feeling kind of like really, uh, that's kind of why I started this series to be honest is to, um, bring back sort of a connection to art after I've been feeling a little dry the last few, um, or last month or two. Um, and so I visited the Blanton Museum of Art in Austin, Texas last week. My daughter was at camp and um, we stayed in a hotel. And so she went to camp during the day and I just kind of got to explore and got to spend some nice quality alone time at the hotel as well, which was amazing. And then, um, but I saw this artwork and absolutely loved it. I will tell you the artist and the title um, was going to be under the video. So I guess I'm not really not sharing it right I like to share the 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 information later so we're not going to focus on that just yet so let's look at this artwork okay so this is at the Blanton sorry the picture is a little bit crooked because this is my own personal picture and this is huge so you can see the floor there so that figure is probably about life size and so I'll tell you immediately why I was drawn to it. Um, one, I was drawn to the color. I was drawn to the size. I was drawn to that contrast between something realistic and, and then abstract on the left. And then um, there's kind of a personal thing that I'll share with you here in a little bit once we've had some time to explore. So before we... I go into kind of sharing my thoughts and ideas about the artwork and what I notice. I would love for you to pause this video and look at the artwork first. So I'm going to smile so that you, you will have my face smiling in your, in your pause and then pause it. And I want you to really look at it and, and take some time. Maybe you take some notes, maybe you draw it, maybe you, um, you know, just write a poem about it, whatever you want to do, just really spend some time looking at it, um, thinking about what you think it's about, um, thinking about the layers of meaning in here, um, really uh, noticing all the details, and then also noticing if there's anything for you, any meaning or message that you can find for yourself. So do that first before you hear anything I have to say about it. So I'm going to smile while you pause. Okay, I've done that. And hopefully you have spent some time looking at art. You've um, explored this painting for yourself. And um, now I'm just going to kind of talk about it for a little bit of time. Um, I love this move from realistic over on the right side of the painting and it, how it gets more and more abstract over to the left. Um, it's really interesting to me because we often read things from left to right. And so this idea of her moving to the right, kind of as, as we read, we usually, you know, read to the right. She's taking these steps forward. Her, she's her, you know, torso is pushed forward, her face is forward. You know, she has this forward momentum um, that she is moving forward. Um, but we often read things you know, left to right. So that was pretty cool. But we're going to read it from right from right to left because that feels like the most natural thing to me right now. Um, when we're looking at this, so we have a, a more realistic portrayal over on the right. We see um, a realistic figure, realistic clothing, um, a woman in a beautiful dress taking a step forward. She's in sort of a natural environment. But if we zoom in on it, and I'm going to try to do that. We can see that it's not fully realistic. There's a lot of paint drips, which is really cool. Um, I'll share my thoughts on the paint drips, but I want you to think about what the paint drips might represent for you. Um, and then as we move forward, we see her hair creates this vast form that goes all the way from her head 
over onto an entirely different canvas. Um, and then it goes from sort of curls, black curls, and then it becomes something more and something greater and something bigger and something more expansive um, filled with stuff. So if we were to zoom in kind of near the beginning, we can see she has these sort of um, white lines that go through. These remind me kind of like stars and constellations in a way, but how they're all connected and then they all go out in different directions. And then it's almost like it's underneath. There's a lot of this, these kind of drips going forward and it's like behind the hair almost. Now, this picture is not doing it justice, but this part of the painting was almost like a really clear like rip in the time <laughs> the time space continuum where you could like see the stars coming through. Um, this like this beautiful night sky um, within her hair. And that's, I think that's probably what's making me think these are very like constellation star-like because we've got that, that represented here. And then, um, you know, there's, the more you look at it, the more you see like, like if you look at right here, and almost like this, this shadowy figure, like it's a person, um, you know, if we go down to the bottom, we can kind of, the more we look, the more maybe we can find some shapes and things, but it's really just a lot of abstract circles and, and patterns and things, colors. And then um, as we get to, I'm going to get back to zoom it all the way out. As we get over to the left, we can see that it becomes more like um, vertical, a lot of drips and a lot of just colored lines. And it made me think of, um, this was like the way, way back past. And then up closer to her was like the more the present. And then you think about the hair growing, like this is the new growth. You know, my hair never gets beyond the new growth, <laughs> the new the growth, because I keep it so short. But like, as you get along, like that hair that's at the very bottom is like the hair that was there. It shows the passing passage of time. So to me, it looks like it's back in the past. And then as we get all the way back, we get to this golden, like that is the picture I feel like doesn't do it justice. And I'm not seeing it, you know, in person again right now, but to me, it was very more, more like, like reminiscent of like the gold you'd see in like a Byzantine painting or something. Like it was very much like gold rather than yellow. Um, so a lot of immediate connections that, you know, the first connection I think that I saw thought of was a black women in their hair and that there is a lot of history in hair. There's a lot of social justice in, in hair. There's a lot of um, rules that the white supremacist patriarchy applies to black people's hair. Um, so there's a whole history, you know, a whole connection there that I don't necessarily have um, personal connection to, but that I'm aware of and that I have, you know, I've heard people talk on. And then it reminded me there was a TV series on Hulu last year um, about Black women and their hair. It's called The Hair Stories, Stories of Black Women's Hair and Self-Acceptance. Wait, was that the full title? Or maybe it's just called The Hair Tales. Maybe the hair tales. I think it might be just called the hair tail hair tales when the article that I have open has the tagline, but either them, e whatever that exists. And it made me want to go watch that It's a six episode docuseries. So that would be something definitely, um, worth watching. There's a lot of books about it as well, but, um, that of course, that's what I immediately thought of. And then where I went next was, this was a really, um emotional artwork for me to look at because I was in an emotional place <laughs> last week okay I've been in an emotional place for a couple months but or you know 42 years I've been in an emotional place but my current emotional place um is it was really interesting you know I am writing a book that's coming out in the fall and it's a memoir and it's kind of my path to wholeness through art and each chapter has a work of art in it and so as you write a memoir, you have to relive your entire past and <laughs> to write about it. And so it's been really um, 
I don't know, dramatic is the best word I can say is like every single chapter when I write it, I have to kind of relive it. And then I have gone, I went back to, I had to go back to therapy because I'm like, Oh, I've got so much I have to deal with. And then it's like you, then life just hands you something else you're to deal with about what you're writing about. It's like, it's, it's been, it's just been a complete trip, but, um, in the process of this, you know, I, I've been looking and I, I'm getting near the end. We're in the last round of edits before like the, you know, like the proofreading over commas and things where I like the last round of edits and it's, so it's coming, like, it's going to be finished. And like by the end of July, I think my book might be completely finished. Um, and so I'm at that space where I'm like, oh, people are going to read it. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, okay. Like all this stuff, really deeply personal stuff. I'm like, I'm going to put that out in the world. And I'm like, and then you look back at your whole life and you're like, it's all in there. And, and you know, so it's, it's been, it's been really weird. So anyway, going back to Austin last week was really interesting for me because that's where I went to college. I got my brand new UT sweatshirt. I got picked it up last week. Um, but that's where I went to college. And so I dropped my daughter off at camp on Monday and then I decided to just drive around a little bit. And, um, no, this was the same day. No, this was Tuesday. Um, Monday I had meetings. So Tuesday I dropped my daughter off for camp. It was like eight o'clock. And then I decided to just drive around. I like went by the old, where I used to work, which was the Austin Museum of Art, which doesn't exist anymore. It was now a, like a CVS or something where that used to be. Um, and then, uh, you know, drove past the Capitol. Then I went through like um, UT campus and I went to the art, saw the art building and my, the, my old dorms. And, you know, I just kind of was driving around. But like the minute I got to UT campus, I just started crying. Like, it's like, like not just tearing up, but like legitimately it's like tears streaming down my face crying. And so I was, and it was really interesting because it, it's just seeing again. And I have, I've been to campus since I left. It's not like the first time I, I went, but having just written about my journey, I was like, wow, there's a lot that has happened in the last 20 years from when I left there um, to now. And I did not have a great college experience. I was very, uh, very, very anxious. There's a, a lot of shame, a lot of things <laughs> you can read about in the book. It's not all sad stuff, but like there's, I it was not, it was not, um, I was not in a great place. And so while I was there, it was like, I was seeing all the places and I'm like, oh, I remember here where I almost had a panic attack. <laughs> and I remember here when I was crying about this other thing. And I was like, I just, I, I was seeing the places, like the physical places that I um, like so viscerally remembered seeing them again. And so I like, yeah, I got weirdly emotional. Not weirdly. I mean, it's not whatever. It's normal for me to get emotional. So so then I, I went back to the hotel for a while and then came back later to the museum because the museum wasn't open that early. And um, the museum didn't exist when I went to college. It was in the art building that Blanton Museum was, but they built this whole new building after I left. Um, so I got to go to that that new building. Well, it's not new anymore. It, I guess it's been 15 or 20 years since they built it. Um, so I was in a place of nostalgia. I was in a place of summarizing my growth of 20 years and recognizing where I was and where I am and so when I saw this that's what I saw in this painting I saw a woman moving forward she's got forward moment momentum and through all the past 20 years of my life I was moving forward I was take I was healing and I was taking steps and I was you know getting through the layers of things that you need to need to address before you can get to the layers underneath and then you get to the layer you know, it's like the healing process is layer after layer and so I was kind of seeing big picture and small picture at the same time of my journey and so when I saw this that's kind of what I saw is like this being the past her past all represented in her hair and how the farther back you get, the more muddy it is, the more unclear it is, but it's still there. And like, it's still like the essence and the color of the past is still there in your body and you're, it's, it's in her hair. It's still, it's still a memory. It's still like, I can still feel how I felt then if I really allow myself to. And so, but then as you get closer, it gets more, more detailed. It gets more vibrant. Um, it gets more clear. I think I already said that. 
Um, and then you see like this connection to um, infinity and you see like the, the expanse of this, what I think of the space, think of the expanse of expansiveness of the world and infinity. And then I see these sort of constellations of connections, like all the connections that she's made in her life and all the things that she has done and how they connect back to each other and how one thing leads to another and how this connects to that and how like it really is, you know, you look back and you're like, oh, I see, you see that thread um, that you couldn't see while you were in it because you're just kind of in, in, the, in the mess of it, right? And then you see in here like the shadowy figures and like the people in your past that you remember, but like that made an impact or made negatively or positively or um, represented in here like this. I don't know if this is meant to be a shadowy figure, but to me, it is such a shadowy figure. Like even right here, you can almost see a little like a, a figure like you can. And like even this almost looks like a face, like a, pro, a profile. And, you know, there's a lot like of that mystery um to be found in here um but at the same time she's moving forward that she is she's she's continuing to move and then as she's moving forward even the present is dripping the present is dripping away and becoming becoming the past with every step forward the present becomes the past and so that's my experience of this painting so um uh, it was probably an overly wordy exploration of of what I felt while I looked at this, um, and it was really it was really meaningful for me to spend some time in front of this. And I wish there was a bench because I just had foot surgery two weeks ago, and so I couldn't. Um, I would, and then and then this was one of the last things I saw. So I was at a point where my feet were like not wanting me to stand anymore. But um, I wish there was a bench. I would have sat in front of it for a lot longer than I did. But uh, absolutely beautiful work of art. Um, this is a really amazing artwork to explore for yourself. Um, looking for the symbols in it. Um, what is, what do you see? Um, cause I even see like, like the golden and the pat, like that's like, but to me, that's like before she was born. Like that's like, if you are to tap into like a spiritual element that maybe that's like the, um, her place before she kind of came onto this planet. And then even, um, you know, you can get into the, like the space, uh, there too, that like she contains, um, the infinite in her. Uh, so really powerful. Like, I think too, thinking about the symbols of like her, her walking barefoot connect, you know, connecting to the earth, um, her look forward, um, you know, all like all of that um, represented there. And then of course there's the um, socio-political uh, interpretations and, and what it means to be a woman of color in our world and, and how that is um, impacting. So these are all different things you can kind of consider and look at for yourself as you look at this work of art. Uh, this artwork is done by an artist and I do not know how to pronounce her name. I did look it up, you know, Wikipedia, sometimes it has like a thing. She has a Wikipedia page, but it didn't say how to pronounce her name. Um, I guess I could have maybe gone to YouTube and see if I could find, I could have gone a deep dive. Maybe I would have eventually found it, but um, it is Mequita Ahuja. And I don't know if that's exactly right. It could be Makita, but it's M-E-Q-U-I-T-T-A is her first name. Last name is A. H U J A. This is uh, the title is Parade Diptych, two thousand seven. And I visited the artist website. I invite you to do the same. She does a lot of self portraiture, and one of the things I really thought was um, interesting about her website is her, I read her artist statement, and she writes about how uh, people of color, especially women of color, are expected to. Um include their own identity in their artwork that they're supposed to um show their their inner life their personal experiences as fuel for their art and I've talked about this before and especially in that lesson I do Judith Slang Holferny's uh, where we compare Caravaggio's version versus Gentileschi's version and how we can see like Gentileschi's anger and we can see her um, 
how she, you know, the, the problems she had as a woman artist, like we can see that represented in her art, but we don't necessarily do that for white men. Like we don't, we don't look for their um, lives in the artwork as we do with others. So I'm going to read just a little piece of her artist statement because I think it is really um, insightful. So she says, my mission is to challenge expectations of the self-portrait, especially the self-portrait of a woman or a person of color. I show a woman of color articulating her own story and the story of painting. As a female artist of color, I have internalized the expectation that I should mine my personal experiences as case studies in the social conditions of race, class, and gender. I both accept and step beyond that expectation. I aim to hold and to embody in my work both politics of identity as well as the function of self-portraiture, um, exemplified by Poussin's 1650 self-portrait. She was a fan of Poussin, I think, that she talks about him later on. Um, displaying authority within the history and discipline of painting. So she both, she's doing both, you know, she's choosing to explore the concept of what a self-portrait is and, and push the limits of what a self-portrait is while also incorporating um, her own experiences of life as a uh, black woman. She is mixed race. She is black and South Asian heritage. Uh, I think India is a South Asian in one place in Indian um in another place but India is considered South Asia isn't is it not so I think I just answered my own question um so she she does a lot of self-portraits she has a lot of her work on her website nikitaahuja.com and um I invite you to explore her art and how I would incorporate this in a classroom, I think there are so many, such a, it is so ripe for a, just a discussion um, when you look at this and all of the things that they're noticing. So you might, um, you know, I would just open it up for discussion. They're going to talk about how it changes from realistic to abstract. They're going to notice the paint drips. They're going to look for the, they're, of course, they're going to look for things in the hair, like the figures. And, you know, they're going to find things in there. Um, they're going to notice the, the space. They're going to notice the connection, like all of those things they're going to notice. And so as, as you um, explore, you can ask them, well, what do you think that means? Or, um, uh, you know, if they've noticed something about the paint dripping, like what could that represent or what could the colors represent or, you know, all of the things. So really uh, open for a lot of discussion. Um, I think that a poem, I poems are big. I like to recommend poems and I probably recommend it every day. <laughs> I will do it. And it turns out it's because I like to write poems myself and you will find poems in my upcoming book. So um, that was a whole journey ex accepting as well. So um, a poem about their hair. So like what their hair says about them. You could even incorporate um, an artwork about hair or like something to do with their hair. Maybe it's a self-portrait um, with their hair, um, like their pieces of their identity in their hair, you know, something like that would be cool. Um, really picking apart the different symbols, like the, um, uh, uh, the paint drips and things. And then also like talking about how this could be, uh, like it is a diptych. It is a two paintings put together as one artwork. You might say, well, if it was a triptych, if we were going to add a painting to the, to the right of this, um, what might be in that? So if maybe the left one is the past and maybe the middle one is the present, maybe the third one is the future, they might have a completely different answer to that. I'm so personally tied to my own personal interpretation of this. That's what I see. Um, so a lot of different ways you could take this. Um, but, uh, and then if you're exploring this for yourself, I think just, um, you know, looking for the connection. So I'm going to do a separate video, maybe sometime in the next week about a process that you can use to connect to these works of art. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to make a note to do that. That will work for all of these works of art. Uh, if you um, would like a kind of easy process to connect it to your own self. Um, I Another thing that you can do as a teacher to share this work of art with your students 
is to compare and contrast the work with Lorna Simpson. So I'm going to um, open up a different share screen because I have it on my PowerPoint of this. Um, and that was not the PowerPoint that I had open. Okay, so here's the artist's name written out and the title. Again, this is at the Blanton Museum of Art in Austin, Texas. Um, but here is some artwork by Lorna Simpson, and she has this whole series where she focuses on mainly Black women in their hair, although I have seen some um, other genders represented as well. But she does these beautiful um, um, watercolor paintings and collage work, you know, and then and there were several times when I was looking up artworks to put on this slide where it talked about galaxies in relationship to the hair. So it was like galaxies of, uh, now I don't, it's been too long. What is this? Uh, let's see if I still have it open to my screen. No. Oh, here. Galaxies unto themselves. Um, yeah, there was multiple, multiple use of the word galaxy. So that's a cool combination connection too with that space part of uh, Ahuja's painting. So a uh, compare and contrast with Lorna Simpson um, or just another way to explore, um, explore uh, another, another artist um, with a similar type of theme. Um, okay, I think that's it for today. I don't know if each of these videos will be quite as long as, as this one was, but it's, since I had like a recent personal experience with this, I wanted to share it. And then of course I had the introduction stuff at the beginning. So that was our first work of art for the series. And I will be back um, tomorrow for with another one. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow.